Welcome to Tim's Lico Challenge. The problem's called Smallest String with Swaps. You are given a string S and an array of pairs of indices in the string pairs, where pairs I is going to have two values A and B, indicating the two indices of the string. You can swap the characters of any pair of indices in the given pairs any number of times. So what that means is we're given two pairs here, 0, 3. These are the index numbers of the string, and we can swap them however many number of times that we want. Now, we want to return the lexicographically smallest string that S can be changed to after all the swaps. So with this one, we can see we want to swap 0, 3 since B is smaller than D, and we want to swap C and A since A is smaller than C, obviously. So we result with this one, B, A, C, D. Now here, we can see that there's an overlap, right? And that's going to allow us to actually swap 0, 3, then 0, 2, then 1 and 2, giving us A, B, C, D, which is kind of just the entire sorted string here. All right, so initially, I'm sure as many of you, as did I, try to do something recursively. Maybe we could write the recursive call stack and go through all the pairs and just see down each line, can we form a lexicographically smaller string? But you want to abandon that approach right now because uh, it's, it's going to be exponentially big and not efficient. The real hint that actually should send you down the right path is this. Think of this as a graph problem. Now, that confused me at first because why would this be a graph problem? Well, say that we had the string here, D, C, A, B, and each one of these represented a node in a connected graph. Each one of these pairs tells us what's connected. So here we can imagine this D and B has like a edge. And same with here, C and A has an edge. Now what that means is there's two groups, right? There's one group here with the D and B, and there's another group here with the C and A. And we can sort that, we can sort those to form whatever is the smallest string. So if we sort this group here first, this would be BD. And then we sorted this group here, this would be AC, right? And that indeed is the answer. But the issue is, what if there's overlaps? And there is like right here, there's an overlap. Say that zero, 0, 3 had an edge, 1 and 2 had an edge, but then 0, 2 also had an edge. What does that mean? Well, that means actually this is a connected graph, like the whole thing's connected. So it doesn't really matter what these steps are needed to swap this up. Like we know that since it's a connected graph, we could sort the whole thing. So this whole thing is one group, so we can sort it A, B, C, D. So what data structure is really good for that? That would be a disjoint set or a union find. Uh, what a union find essentially does is allows us to indicate at each one of these nodes, which group is it under? And the way that we do that is we have two functions. We have one for binding, and this basically returns to us the parent node that we're going to connect each one of these nodes to in, in the group. And we also have one that's going to do a union. And the union basically goes up the Stack here, so say that we're trying to union 0, 3. What this will do is take, uh, say, we want to union 0, 3, which we'll take, we'll choose one of these, and let's say we choose this one to be the parent, and then we're going to update this to 3. And now what this allows us to say is, all right, well, when we want to find what group A and D are under, it's going to look, okay, search to see if this index number matches the node. It doesn't, so we'll go to 3. And here it does, right? This three matches the index number here. So that means this is under the same group. And the same thing occurs here where we're gonna say two. Now B is under the same group right here. And it's pretty complicated. I don't wanna to get too into it, um, but just trust me when you say that this thing is gonna allow us to know which group does each one of these nodes fall, in, fall under. And once we have that, we have the groups. We just need to sort these groups and re uh, reform our string to tell us what the lexicographically smallest thing would be. 
Okay, so let's first start by creating a parent array that's going to give us all the nodes. So what I'll do is make this n. So this will be length of string. And this is just going to be a list of the range of n. It should work. Now we need two functions here, right? We need the find. And what this does is kind of go up our parent uh, to see which one matches the thing, like which matters where we'll say, okay, if parent A does not equal A, we're going to keep going up to find the one that it does. So we'll say parent A then should equal um, find, you know, parent A. That should keep going up here. But once we do that, we just return parent A. Now when we union, essentially what we'll do is we'll say parent I guess find a should equal find b. I think that's should be it. Say parent, yeah, because these need to match up, right? And this will be find b, parent find a. So I'm pretty sure that's right. And we could test it out here. We can say for a and b in pairs. Let's try to union A and B, and let's just see what the parent looks like. So this is kind of like what allows us to know where it stands. So you can see these, 0 and 3 is in one group, and 1 and 2 is in one group. Now, this isn't perfect, just so you know. We could have situations where this isn't going to look as nicely as it does not right now. Um, so when you find the group number that you're looking for, you have to keep doing this fine thing to keep going up and make sure to do that or else um, you're gonna, you're, yeah, you're going to run into some problems. So this we've done, it created a union find. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to find the groups. Okay. Find the groups, the number of groups. And what I'll do is actually create a default dict for the characters here. Okay. So we know what characters are inside this group and a separate one also with the index numbers. And that's going to allow us to be able to re like recreate our, reinitialize our, our string. So what I'll do is say, okay, groups, this will be the index numbers. And this will just be a list, default dict of lists. And we also have groups, the characters, which are going to be another default dict of list. So now that we have, um, wait, we got four, four, find these groups. So, so what I'll do is say four, let's say I in range of N, what are we going to do? Let's find our group. So this will, let's call it group. This will be find I. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is say groups, group, let's append what? Well, I, I guess for groups of I, we're just going to append whatever next number this is. And for groups character, we're going to characters, we're going to append the string. So this should be S of I. So now at this point, we should have these two dictionaries. And let's take a look at what the what they look like should just be two um, lists with characters and index numbers. Oops. Ah, okay. So I, I know you're not really supposed to print, but this just kind of helps me go in order. So yeah, you can see here, look, group number three, we got zero, three. Group number two, we got one, two. Group number three, we got D and B, and we got C and A. So great, now we have everything we need just to be able to restructure our resulting string and then return it, right? So what I'm going to do is say, we'll call this result. We're just going to have an empty, we'll make this a list first. And this will just be an empty string times n. And we got to go through all the groups that we have. How many groups that we have? Mm, not sure. So we'll say four, I guess, g in uh, groups i dot keys. And doesn't matter if we group keys or or character that shouldn't matter uh, what are we going to do well we got to get all the index numbers so that'll be groups i this will be 
G, but we gotta sort this, right? So we what we do is just create another one, we'll sort it like this. And we'll do the same thing for characters. Oops. Ah, sorted. Oops, C H G. Now let's put everything here. These are both sorted. I think we can just zip it up. We'll say for I C in zip of index number and characters. Let's put everything in here. I equal to C. Okay, and each one of these index numbers should now be populated by some character. And then we can just return our resulting string that we do by doing a string join, something like that. Okay, so let's make sure this works. Uh, what would happen if we put the overlap here? Let's say 0, 2. Yeah, so it looks like it's working, right? So let's go ahead and submit it. Oops. And there we go. So this definitely not an easy question. Totally looks like I got this on my own. <laughs> I did not. I know what a union find is, but that was like not even in my radar when I first looked at this problem. Um, so this actually took me a while to understand. But now I, I think I do get it. I hope that I can retain this and find more problems with this sort of problem, uh, with this sort of pattern. Now, what is the time complexity? Well, let's think here. Let's say this is N and this is M. Well, we definitely have to sort each time, right? So it's N log N at the minimum and N log N, N log N plus log of M, I suppose, log of M, because we have to go through the pairs, right? Um, but, to be honest, to be honest, I'm not sure because this union find part here concerns me a little. I'm not 100% sure like how much time complexity that will add, but I believe it should be just n, o of n, I believe. So uh, it's really the sorted part here that's going to make it a little bit expensive, but ultimately n log n, not bad, plus log of m. That's just a guess. So please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Appreciate it. And thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.